Now all these jam tracks that I'm going to play against are in the key of A. I said it's very important that you practice these in different keys. And the jam tracks, by the way, are very simple. A simple shuffle drum groove, and I played long tones on the bass. I didn't put in bass figures or walking bass because I want you to clearly hear the bass line and the chords. Because I don't know how far advanced your ear is. If I put walking bass lines in, it might confuse you. All right, let's listen to this track. Now measure five, be the D chord, the four. Measure seven, we're back to the one. Measure nine, we're on the five. Measure 11, we're back to the one. All right, you can hear, you can hear the bass line, just a real strong root coming right in on the downbeat of each measure. We're in the key of A. We're gonna root number one, the A on the sixth string. That means we're right here in the fifth fret. And remember our patterns. If one is on the sixth string, four is in the same fret on the fifth string, and five is always two frets higher than the four. So here's our one, our four, and our five. Now I'm going to start from a very simple standpoint. I suggested if you're just a beginner, you play the bass line. So let's play along with the track, playing just the bass line. One. There's your one chord. Now measure five, you've got to feel it go to the four chord. Measure seven, we're back to the one chord. Measure nine, we're on the five chord. Measure 11, we're on the one chord. Now we'll raise the bar a little bit and play just a power chord figure. And I'm playing that shuffle figure with my right hand. Here comes my four chord. Back to the one chord. Five. Back to the one. Now we'll raise the bar a little bit and put some boogie woogie in. Let's talk about chord forms. I showed you those three note structures, which consisted of the root and the bass, and then your guide tones, which are the thirds and the flatted sevenths of the dominant chord. And I showed you the guide tones on adjacent strings. Later on, we start fleshing out these chords. I'll show you how to play them on non-adjacent strings. It offers up some possibilities. This is our structure for the 1-7. That means the A7, because we're in the key of A. Here's our D7, the 4-7. Here's the E7, the 5 7. Now you can see with my right hand I'm hybrid picking. I'm using the pick, middle, and ring fingers. You could strum these. If you strum them, make sure you mute that fifth string. I'm going to play along with the track using these three note structures, and I'm doubling the bass in this case. Measure 5, we go to the 4. Measure 9, which I call the peak of the progression because that's the 5 chord. It's your highest pitch chord. Back to the 1. All right, now if we had a walking bass line right now and it was a jazz feel, you wouldn't want to hit that bass note. Remember I told you that depending upon what ensemble you're in, the orchestration, things like that, instrumentation, you have to pick and choose what you're going to play. So let us delete the bass notes. That leaves us with these two guide tones. The G and the C sharp for the A7. And you can play those with any finger combination. I encourage you to practice that because that's going to free you up for adding other tones for chord voicings. Then you move down a half step for your four chord, your four seven, the D seven. It'll always be like that with your guide tones. And then the five chord will be up a half step from your one. So here is one, four, and five. I'll play along with the track just using the guide tones. how I'm approaching from a half step below sometimes. Then we can raise the bar by adding other tones with these guide tones in the bass line. 
you have charts which show you where these tones exist. In the next section, I'm going to show you how to do that, and that will get you up and running for all of the progressions if you want to flesh out your harmony.